No one respected us. We're unapologetically ourselves. We're not just here to be athletes. Everybody who comes in as a new Colts Hawk should leave as a great man. Okay, New Pulse is on the schedule. That's an easy dub. This is not an easy dub anymore. This is going to be a battle. For me, it was kind of unfinished business. New Pulse is not a pushover team anymore. We won't stop till we finish. This is our year to really go out there and take it to them. This looks fucking horrendous. We're not scared of anybody, all right? I believe in all of you. Let's go. The 2024 New Paltz men's lacrosse team is about to begin their fifth season. And with a team of mostly seniors and grad students entering their final season, there is a lot of excitement around this team. Yeah, my name is Dylan Neisler. I'm the head men's lacrosse coach at SUNY New Paltz. Coach Dylan Neisler is entering his second season at the helm for the Hawks. And while he is new to the head coaching role, he is very familiar with New Paltz. I ended up playing for the previous head coach, Dwayne Stewart. Um, I played for him at Lincoln Memorial University in Tennessee. He got the head coaching job here after I graduated. And he kind of went and asked me to be his assistant. My response was, when do I get on the plane? So um, it was really Dwayne's fault that I'm here and why I came back. For me, when New Paltz opened and Dwayne left, it was kind of unfinished business in a way. For me, I wanted to see out the end of the process. Neisler had a hand in recruiting many of the older players on the roster today. He kind of sold me, you know, on this idea of being able to build this program from the start, getting a lot of time and continue to play a sport that I really enjoy. The program was new when I first came here and I was being recruited. So I saw an opportunity to build something, build a team, build a culture. And I was really excited to be a part of that. I really got sold on the idea of just like building, building a whole team and not just like walking in and walking into pot, like success. I, I was excited to take something from from nothing to something. Expectations have never been this high for the new Paltz lacrosse team. Coming off the most successful season in the young program's history, the Hawks are hungry to make it, not only back to the playoffs, but to upset some teams in the playoffs as well. New Paltz was picked to finish fourth in the conference for the upcoming season. This is the first time the Hawks were not ranked last. Last year, that team we were set up to do something special, and I think everybody in that hall knew that. So it was, it was, we were so proud that, you know, our class, that we got to achieve at least, you know, a playoff berth, you know, so it wasn't all for nothing that we achieved something here. It certainly felt like many teams didn't take us too seriously. You know, they thought third, fourth year team, new coach again, they've had this kind of crazy ride, you know, they definitely weren't expecting what they got. And I think that was not, a, you know, it was definitely partly the reason we were able to go as far as we was. We were able to catch a lot of teams off by surprise and take him into deep waters and it allowed us to win a lot of games. Go, go, go! Yeah! 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 We were the team that, you know, we were 3-11 and and went 0-7 and the last year. No one respected us. Everyone's like, okay, new pulse is on the schedule. That's an easy dub. So like teams don't come out there hungry like oh we got to beat New Paltz. We came out there hungry saying we got to beat them. And when we shocked them, then when we shocked them, they didn't know what to do. I think that group really set the table for for this team to be even better, um, and for a young group coming next year to to even build upon that, right? Because now the expectations have changed, and um, I think that's what that group set out to do was to have higher expectations for ones that are after them. I'm excited for us to prove people wrong again and go to that championship and be the one or two team in the SUNYAC. The expectations for this group is first and foremost to make it back, but also once you make it back to actually do something with it, right? Instead of just being happy to be there. One, two. Lacrosse at the collegiate level is very time consuming, so players must manage their time well. Elias Elcock is a senior on the team. 
And while both lacrosse and his classes take up the majority of his time, he has to also make time for his love of music. So I've been playing music for 16 years at this point. Been playing cello for a while. Um, my parents made me and my siblings all play an instrument, and they said, you know, you got to play two, actually. So everybody in my family plays two instruments. Um, and I've always stuck with music, you know. It's something I've always loved. I feel like with time and starting to play sports, it became a bit of an issue to balance, which ultimately led me to take a break for a bit. But, you know, I came back, and, you know, even in college, you know, I played in orchestra. And what you just saw, I played in a quartet. So I've been a part of quartets, quintets, and um, yeah, just love playing music and I'd like to keep playing in some sort of way or fashion in the future, even after college. Let's end on a good note. Yeah. <laughs> Let's end on a good yeah. note. Yeah. <laughs> the good part, guys. The good part. <laughs> Same speed. Okay. All right, one, two, ready. <laughs> music is so much time. It's like, um, it's like playing a sport because it's a full-time job. If you don't practice, you're gonna sound like shit. And you know, I don't practice enough. So you know, I gotta keep going, I gotta keep going. Many players have interests and responsibilities outside of the sport that makes the spring season quite hectic. Zach Lung is in his final semester, and this has been his busiest season yet. In order to graduate, he must complete his student teaching requirement, which has been a challenge to juggle in combination with the season. Hi, I'm Zach Leung. I'm a senior. Uh, I'm a defenseman here at New Paltz. So this semester, I'm student teaching as well as playing lacrosse. So student teaching, I go to school eight weeks uh, for high school and eight weeks for middle school. Uh, it, right now, I'm at a high school and it's been pretty challenging for sure, uh, getting all the lesson plans each day, uh, making sure I understand all the students' needs and uh, how to help them out, but also get driving to practice. I'm usually late to practices now uh, with the student teaching and um, it takes a lot of my time, but I love playing lacrosse and I love teaching. So. It's been a challenge for sure, but I've been enjoying it. I do have a ton of respect for any guys who go through that student teaching process because it's really challenging because you're kind of going from a full job throughout the day and then you're trying to balance the cross and then your time after. So it's definitely very challenging. Zach Schmidt is a captain on the team and his outspoken leadership style and toughness commands respect. He played the majority of last season with a broken clavicle. I think it was our first game of the season, you know, out of conference in late February, so around this time, and one of the first plays of the game just pff, crack went down shoulder, and I knew it was messed up. I knew it was definitely out of sorts. I'm always gonna put my team first in any situation that I can, and if you know I'm not being dragged off the field and they're not telling me you gotta sit, then I'm gonna do whatever I can to get out there and help my team. You know, last year was a year where you know I'm a senior and. We hadn't really made that decision to come back yet. A lot of us seniors, we were we went into last season expecting that to be the last go. So I played every game. You know, when that happened, I thought to myself, you know, if I sit out now and I'm kind of banking on next year, or even if I'm not, you know, that's that's my season. You know, that's my everything that I've been working towards. So, you know, and I was not as effective, obviously, as I could have been. But, you know, you try and do the right thing, and you try and be an example for your teammates. I think as a coach, you're not supposed to have favorite players, but you do. And, and that's a kid that... Um, I love to death. That's a kid that I have all the time in the world for and, and I'll always care about and I hope he stays around for as long as we can possibly keep him around. So I love that kid to death. This is not what I signed up for. I'm kidding, I signed up for this. I love this shit. Makes me so happy to be out here. Winter Wonderland is beautiful. Two days away from their first game of the 2024 season, the New Paltz Hawks were faced with a unique problem. They arrived to practice to find the field covered in snow. Ah! Ah! You can RKO me. No, oh no, let's do it. Fuck you can RKO me. You can RKO me. Can I have my stick? Exactly what I had in mind for a fifth year. Just shoveling. Yo, great. Oh. I also like the fucking amount of learning we're trying to do, right? He's getting back, trying to fucking figure shit out, figure shit out on the offense, move guys around. 
defense okay. figuring it out, right? A lot of good stuff going on. We got to keep it up rolling into next week. Cool. Tom, Tony, guys, and Lazak, anything? All, All, All right, cool. Here we go. Family on me, family on three. One, two, three. Family. family. Good job, boys. Two, three, the four, Hawks have four, never six, beaten five, Maritime, eight, but they feel that with their experience, this could be the year they take down the privateers. I think this team's ready. We, we have a mature group of guys that know what to come out from Maritime. We know they're going to be hooting and hollering. They're going to try to hit us. They're going to be in our face, but we're ready for that now. And we got to uh, not play into them, and we got to dictate our own pace. I am fully confident that we can win this game, and it would mean so much to everyone on this team if we were able to beat a team that we've never beaten before. Quick, 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 quick. 99. Ooh. 100. Ooh. Oh, 101. I didn't see either. <sighs> Yo, get this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Number 77, number one Fogo, all senior. Hear me. You want to do more, bro? He doesn't want it anymore, bro. He's done. He's done. Look at that. He's gas. I'm 225 pounds. I'm not. Yes, sir. I thought today was arguably our best practice that we've had in a long time. You guys had energy. There was tempo. O1 some, D1 some. Um, and I hope that that carries over and, and that's our... Standard from here on out. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Boys, hey boys, hey boys, hey boys, hey. Yo, 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 yo. Hey, tomorrow we're calm, cool, and collected. All right. When we on that, when we go to that fucking field, we're fucking business. All right. They're gonna come out fucking hooting and hollering. We don't give a fuck, okay? We don't fail the fucking bitch test. We're not scared of anybody. All right. Hey, we're fucking ready for this fucking team. All right. We're ready for this game, okay? I believe in all of you. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Oh, yeah, three, 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 one, two, three. Hey. Hey. Oh, hey. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> This game against Maritime will be the last season opener for the majority of the Hawks roster. There are 15 players graduating after this season, and although that makes up the majority of the roster, the future is still bright for the program. Before we used to have to explain who we are, now it's kind of like um, we know what you're getting yourself into, um, which is why that 24 class is so big and so many guys are so excited to be a part of this. I'm just so proud of it. It's just, you know, everyone that's been in this program, whether you never picked up a stick or, you know, you were a starter for your team or you never played on your uh, high school team, like everyone contributed to the program to what it is today. And, you know, just seeing it grow and having people come in and come out and, you know, contribute uh, to our culture and, you know, the team and our dynamic. It's just I'm very proud of that. And, you know, I hope it just keeps growing for years to come. I think this program has the potential to be great from the area it is near Long Island, a lot of places in New York, Connecticut, all these uh, good areas for lacrosse. It has the potential to be one of the better programs, I think, in D3. 
While this is the beginning of the end for the majority of the roster, these players have laid the foundation for a lacrosse program that will continue to thrive long after the players have hung up their jerseys. As they embark on their final journey together, they carry with them the memories, bonds, and lessons learned, ensuring that the spirit of the New Paul Talks lives on in the hearts of future generations of players. 60 minutes, baby. Baby, 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 baby. I hear stories from other teams, whether that's D1, D2, D3, you know, that have such big group of guys that, you know, you can't all just be best friends, buddy, buddy. Like, but I think since we have such a close knit of guys, like everyone knows each other, everybody's friends with each other, everyone can trust each other. So I, I definitely think our team is uh, one of kind. We are one big family and, you know, we seem like idiots a lot of time if you're, if you're from the outside looking in and I ho totally see it. We are idiots, but in a way, we're just dudes having fun who like to play lacrosse and we're one big family, like I said, even though we are idiots. We've been together for five years and something that we've always preached in this program is that family, that brotherhood. And it's something that gets preached across every college program in the nation. You know, everybody's like, oh, family, brother, you know. Everybody pretty much says it, but I feel like here it really holds more weight because of the situation that we came in together. You know, we came in not on this promise of a ring, not on this promise of winning and success, but this promise of being able to build something and create something that's going to last down the line. So I think that's why it means so much to this family is we know what the work that we've put in and we know what we're putting it towards. Go Hawks, baby. <laughs> <laughs>